Coco, a tale that takes place in two very different worlds, the vibrant Mexican city of Santa Cecilia and the mysteriously captivating land of the dead. The story touches on the importance of family, as well as the idea of following your dreams. However, there's a fine moral line that's put to the test throughout the entirety of the picture. Is giving up your dreams necessary to achieve peace with your family? Does being close-minded of other ideas in order to protect those closest to you cause more problems than necessary? Today, we'll find out who gets to join their families for a beautiful Dia de los Muertos and who deserves to get crushed under the enormous silver bell. I'm Brad from Wicked Bench, and this is Coco, Evil to Good. This time, we're flipping things around and starting with those with the darkest of hearts. Let's get started. Surprising no one, our top spot for most evil is Ernesto de la Cruz. From the start of the movie, Ernesto was portrayed as a kind, confident, and passionate man who loved to sing and perform for his fans. He was even seen as a hero and role model in the eyes of the story's main character, Miguel, so much so that the boy wanted to be just like him. Using Ernesto's advice of seize your moment and make it come true, Miguel was determined to become a musician. I'm gonna be a musician! But his good nature is nothing but a cunning lie. When Hector and Ernesto are at last given the chance to talk, the truth is revealed. Hector had decided that he wanted to go back home to his family. However, since this put Ernesto's dream in jeopardy, the man didn't think twice about getting rid of him. He smiled to Hector's face as he gave his best friend a poison drink. That is ruthless. In addition, Ernesto claimed that he never meant to take credit for Hector's songs, which clearly wasn't true, since the film showed Ernesto taking his partner's songs right out of his suitcase. Ernesto was willing to do anything to keep his dream safe. To seize your moment. Even trying to kill Miguel by throwing him off a cliff to keep his reputation clean. As he himself said, I am the one who's willing to do whatever it takes to seize my moment whatever it takes. Anyone who can murder their own best friend and sing a song that was written especially for the child of said friend with confidence and pride to complete strangers is a sociopath. Now, the silver medal of evil goes to the security guards. Throughout the movie, these guys appear to be Ernesto's minions, so their actions could be seen as bad. Now, they are security guards. Their job description is to protect their employer, regardless of that employer's morality, which is also why one of the guards threw Miguel out of the line for Ernesto's party. However, they are ranked this high for one reason. Security! Take care of Miguel. They were told that Miguel would be staying longer than the boy intended and instructed to take care of him. Following that order, the boy was thrown into a pit that he couldn't get out of. This implies that the guards were fully aware of Ernesto's intentions. The bronze medal of evil goes to Don Hidalgo. An important thought to keep in mind here, though, is that the man seen in the movie is not evil himself. He's just an actor. The character Don Hidalgo that he plays, however, is considered immoral since he tried to poison Ernesto in the movie but fails to do so. But the intent is still clear as day. It's also important to point out that this scene was based on the exchange between Hector and Ernesto himself. Next, we have Gustavo. Although he isn't on the screen long, his personality becomes clear as he makes fun of Hector for the way he died. He choked on some chorizo. He choked on some chorizo! Laughing at someone who gets hurt is already questionable as it is, but laughing at someone who died because of their last meal is pretty dark. Following up is Gloria Rivera. Granted, she doesn't have a very big role in the movie, but her only line speaks volumes. During the argument between Miguel and his family, Gloria speaks up that Miguel's love for music is a crazy fantasy. He's cat with crazy fantasy. It's not a fantasy. Having a difference of opinion is normal among family, but calling someone else's dream crazy is uncalled for, regardless of how ridiculous the idea may seem. On that note, next is Berto Rivera. Berto is Miguel's uncle, who, like the rest of the living family, wants nothing to do with music. Berto is quick to blame the plaza for Miguel's obsession with music. It's all that time he spends in the plaza. Instead of actually listening to what the boy has to say, and even gets his nephew deeper in trouble when he tells the family, Miguel was shining a musician's shoes. A musician's shoes? Up next on the list is Elena, Miguel's grandmother. 
For almost the entire movie, she's shown to be strict, just as strict as her own grandmother. No music. Which means, of course, no music is allowed in the house. She's impulsive, easy to anger, no music. demanding, and convinced that her grandmother's way is the better way to live. No music. When she sees Miguel with the musician holding a guitar, she immediately takes off her shoe and whacks the man in the head. She even throws her shoe at Dante when the dog is overjoyed to see Miguel. Out of fear that he'll become like his great-great-grandfather, forgotten and left off the family ofrenda, she breaks Miguel's guitar. Even though she sees how upset he is afterwards, she still chooses to insist that family will make everything better. While her love for her family is admirable and her intentions seem pure, this drive does cause her behavior to be violent and unpredictable. That said, everything she does is because she cares for her family, and the tears of joy she sheds as she watches Miguel and Coco sing together finally shows that she gained an understanding of what music means to Miguel and her mother. Moving on to the corrections officer. Despite the fact that Hector had several charges under his name, this office decided to just let him off with a warning. However, this reason was largely due to the man wanting to see his own living family. If the events had happened on a different day, this may not have worked out in Hector's favor. Then, there's the head clerk of the check station. Well your curse. This character is very helpful to the Riveras in fixing the curse on their family. He tells them everything they need to know to fix a problem. He has a certain wit and politeness to him that provides an interesting exchange, and it's clear that he knows how to do his job well. CC does deserve some credit for a minor character. You better have my dress, Hector! She may seem quick to lose her temper, but can she be blamed for it? She says herself that, I've got to dress 40 dancers by sunrise. Despite this, she did give Hector a dress for his attempt to cross the bridge, and possibly a second one, so he can sneak into Ernesto's party to find Miguel. Like grandmother, like granddaughter. Amelda follows Elena on the list. Don't get the wrong idea. Amelda is a strong, confident woman who does care very deeply for her family and would do anything to protect them, such as giving up her love of music after Hector leaves to provide for her daughter or going on a wild goose chase across the land of the dead for her great-great-grandson. However, since she made the decision to ban music from her family in the first place, this causes the whole Rivera family to be unaccepting of Miguel's dream. Throughout the movie, she's stubborn to let Miguel follow his dream, since she fears that he would end up like his great-great-grandfather. Thankfully, she starts to change her mind when she sees the hurt in Miguel's eyes. That's what family's supposed to do! Support you! But you never will. That's what family's supposed to do. Support you. But you never will. This change is also shown from her treatment of Hector, her husband. At first, she acts resentful towards the man, even going so far as to claim that she wanted to forget him. She's quick to place the blame on him when he and Miguel are found to be in trouble. She even keeps this behavior up when she discovers that Hector was murdered by his own best friend for just wanting to return home. And so, what if it's true? You leave me alone with a child to raise, and I'm just supposed to forgive you? However, she again begins to change her mind when Miguel tells her that Hector taught him a valuable lesson. Nothing is more important than family. This causes her view of her husband to change, slowly but surely. Not only does she help him get back his photo from Ernesto, but she also is given a chance to perform with Hector again, which causes old feelings to resurface. By the end of the movie, she not only lifts her 90-year music band from the Rivera family, she also is seen sharing a kiss with Hector, which is strong evidence that she finally forgives him for leaving. Next is Rosa Rivera. Rosa does act with a sense of superiority when Miguel gets in trouble for being at the music plaza, and she even makes fun of him when he talks about wanting to join the talent show by saying, you have talent to be in a talent show. However, we let this slide more due to age. While most of the people around her are much older and choose to shed out other ideas, Rosa is later shown to be more open towards Miguel's ideas when she herself is shown playing an instrument. Abel Rivera is not far from her. Abel does tease Miguel along with his sister earlier on. What are you gonna do, Shang Shu? Nevertheless, he is set apart due to the fact that he not only went looking for Miguel after his cousin went missing, but he also is seen at the end of the movie playing an instrument and happily singing along with Miguel. Next is Luisa Rivera, Miguel's mother. She doesn't talk much throughout the movie. She's a kind, patient, helpful woman Be back by lunch, Miko. who cares for keeping peace in the family above everything else. We're all together now. That's what matters. In addition, the only time her anger is shown is during the family argument when Miguel refuses to let the topic go. Enrique Rivera, Miguel's father, is next. 
Like a lot of Miguel's family, he's quick to take his mother's side about banning Miguel from the plaza, as well as preventing him from ever playing music again. However, he is also the only one who tries to stop Elena from breaking the guitar. When Miguel runs away, he's the first to try and reach out to him. After the fight between Miguel and family, he and his wife quickly go looking for their son. When Miguel goes missing, Enrique spends the entire night checking the streets for him. Once Miguel hugs him, Enrique returns the embrace and says, I thought I lost you, Miguel. Once again, he stops his mother from taking the guitar away from his son. Good thing too, otherwise, this movie would have quite a different ending. Another minor role is MC. She's shown to be open-minded to let anyone audition for the talent competition. Let the competition begin! She's also very enthusiastic for the competition as well. MC even shows a caring side, as she's one that gives out the announcement for the Rivera family about finding Miguel and getting him home. Chicharron is another minor character. He's mistrusting of Hector, since he let the man borrow many things that Hector never returned. However, he's not completely without heart. He agrees to give Hector his prized possession if he will play a final song for him. Cheech comes off as mean-spirited at first, but maybe being on the brink of the end gives this poor man a sense of generosity and forgiveness. Given how many things he let Hector borrow, his generosity could be spoken highly of, and he still gives away his guitar and fades away, right after giving Hector a word of thanks for making his last moment worthwhile. Gracias. Frida Kahlo is next. She comes across as temperamental at first when she finds Miguel in her studio. Yo! How did you get in here? However, she quickly changes her demeanor when she sees Dante. The mighty show, Lodog. Showing that she does have a soft spot for animals and spirit guides. She's open-minded and isn't afraid to take suggestions for her work. You, you have the spirit of an artist. So much so that she gives Miguel praise for her newfound inspiration. She does show a bit of annoyance at Ernesto for hosting a party instead of rehearsing, but that is understandable since she values her work so highly. Plus, she gives the Rivera family a way into the Sunrise Spectacular show to confront Ernesto, even wishing Miguel good luck as he races off. Oscar and Felipe Rivera are next. These two don't have many lines. However, their actions speak louder than their words. Not only were they quick to get help when their sister couldn't cross the bridge, they also pitched in to go find Miguel. What makes these two stand out is their resolve at the end to protect their family from Ernesto's guards, staying to fight while the rest of the family gets Hector's picture. Following the twins is Victoria. She's a stern woman who walks around with a very annoyed demeanor. He doesn't seem entirely dead. However, she too shows her true colors through her actions. She helps fix Julio's head in the graveyard, she follows the lead to find Miguel and get Hector's picture. But the biggest thing she did to help was pressing the switch that revealed Ernesto's actual character to the audience of his son Spectacular. Her only fault is that she's quick to side with Imelda's view without question, which is understandable since she didn't even know of Imelda's love for music. Right after Victoria is Julio, Miguel's great-grandfather. Julio is, overall, a kind, hesitant character. Like the rest of his family, he does help out any way he can, as with every other deceased member of the Rivera family. Like backing up the twins during the final encounter with Ernesto, he's even willing to snap Miguel out of his fainting trance and approach Pepita with the flower petals to find Miguel. He also offers encouragement when Miguel is hesitant to cross the bridge. Again, his only fault is following Imelda's ways for fear of her iron fist. To such a gentle and unsure man, it is no wonder that he doesn't speak up against her. Moving on to Pepita. From her first appearance, she may seem scary almost monstrous, but this is proven later on to be a false assumption. Her interactions with the rest of the Rivera family have actually shown her to be affectionate. Not only does she play a significant role in finding Miguel, but she even licks his face and saves his life when he's thrown off a cliff by Ernesto. Angry that someone tried to hurt her family, she growls at Ernesto throws him off the stage, and even kicks him into a bell that crushes him for the second time in his existence. Up next is Rosita. Rosita is Miguel's overjoyed, loving grandaunt. The very first thing she does when she sees Miguel is run up to him and embrace him. She's friendly towards everyone around her and gives off a glow of innocence. She is sympathetic towards Hector after watching him get carried away by the staff at the check-in station. I don't know what I'd do if no one put up my photo. Rosita even displays a great amount of patience 
patience and concern as she helps the family to find Miguel. Her strong sense of morality is revealed when she gets the idea to turn the camera on Ernesto to reveal his true nature to everyone who showed up for a sunrise spectacular. Safe to say that program is now canceled. Close to the very top of the list of good is the main character Miguel. Now, some of Miguel's behavior isn't always perfect, such as lying to Hector about Ernesto being his only family, just so he can live out his dream. However, can we really fault a 12-year-old who wants to follow his dreams, especially when his family doesn't agree with him? All Miguel wants is for his family to accept his goal of being a musician. Sadly, even borrowing a guitar temporarily on the day where the living is supposed to give to the dead isn't taken lightly, since this results in Miguel getting cursed. Despite having different opinions than those around him, Miguel is also shown to push at least some of his personal feelings aside to satisfy his family. Even when his grandmother offers him more food, he unwillingly agrees to accept more, simply to please her. He doesn't argue with his uncle when he's told to stay away from the plaza. When his father asks him what a Rivera is, he quotes the family line, a shoemaker through and through just to see his father happy, even if he doesn't feel happy about doing so. However, he finally has enough of compromising when his grandmother breaks the guitar he cherishes so much. I don't want to be in this family! Truthfully, the rest of the movie shows Miguel in a very positive way. He tries to think of a way for Chicharron's character to live on. When the boy witnesses the final death, Miguel is willing to accept that he has to be the one to earn his own blessing to return home by performing for the first time, and he even helps Hector to regain his. When the two are trapped in the sinkhole by showing him a picture of Coco, saying afterwards that he was proud to be the man's family. Miguel's also the only person in the family to stand up for Hector against Emilda, and even willing to give up his dream of music just to make sure Hector can see Coco again. And just to make absolutely sure that this wish became reality for the man, the very first thing Miguel did when he got back from the land of the dead was run straight home and remind Coco of her papa, going to sing the song that she and Hector always sung together giving the woman a sense of hope she had almost lost. We're throwing in the Plaza Mariachi next. Even though he was impatient with Miguel to start off with, he quickly became encouraging and supportive. He offered advice to Miguel and gave the kid a sense of confidence. Show me what you got, muchacho. He's even willing to listen to Miguel's performance to see where he stands as a musician. Even when he's confronted by Miguel's grandmother, he says nothing to get Miguel in trouble. We can't forget the lovable mutt, Dante. Dante's an affectionate, energetic street dog that follows Miguel everywhere he can. From the streets all the way to a giant hole in the ground, Dante even tries to bring Hector and Miguel closer together by dragging Hector onto the stage while Miguel is performing. Despite his impulsive, overactive behavior, he's a brave, loyal companion to Miguel, who is always there to help him out of trouble. Such as when the boy finds himself thrown into a pit by Ernesto's men. He even tried to save Miguel's life after Ernesto throws him off the cliff. Dante continues to help after Miguel snaps at him and calls him a dumb dog who should leave him alone. The silver medal of good goes to Miguel's great-great-grandfather, Hector. From his opening scene, Hector seems to be a deceitful man who wants nothing more than to cross the bridge to the land of the living by any means he can. This includes lying, dressing up as a celebrity, sweet-talking the agents, and even making a run for it. But all this becomes much more understandable later on. When Hector hears that Miguel had never performed before, he gives him advice and exercises to calm his nerves and give him confidence. He even keeps up this encouragement when Miguel is on stage. While it is true that Hector gets mad at Miguel for lying to him, he's more upset that Miguel was choosing his love of music over his family. Given Hector's history, the man knows exactly the consequences for this kind of choice. It's revealed why Hector is being forgotten. His partner Ernesto stole credit for the music that was now famous, yet he still puts all of that aside. I don't want to fight about it. I just want you to make it right. I don't want to fight about it. I just want you to make it right. All Hector wants is to see his family again. Hector reveals that all of his deceitful actions and desperation to cross the bridge was just so he can see his daughter again. All he wanted was a chance to see her one more time before he disappeared completely. In this moment, we're introduced to the caring, gentle side of Hector's personality. He's filled with regret over leaving his home and his family, especially since he died shortly after doing so. All Hector wants 
is to make everything right again, stating, I never should have left Santa Cecilia. I wish I could apologize. I wish I could tell her that her papa was trying to come home and that he loved her so much. My Coco. When Hector sings Remember Me with Coco, the love and care in his eyes and voice are overwhelming. The idea of never seeing his daughter again breaks his heart and leaves him in a state of depression. Hector doesn't even get upset when Miguel says he lost his picture. The only thing the man cares about is getting Miguel home in time. Finally, the gold medal of good goes to Mama Coco. She's an elderly woman who has memory trouble. How are you, Julio? However, this has not affected her overall good nature. She's a kind, simple woman who, after many years, still hopes in her heart that her father will return home. Papa? Papa is home, Mama. <laughs> She believes in her papa so strongly that she kept all the letters, poems, and his picture, despite her mother wanting to forget he was even in the picture in the first place. This action does show a rebellious side to her character, in a good way. For her family's sake, she keeps her love for her father to herself, which is what kept him from disappearing from the land of the dead long ago. The sincerity in her eyes after Miguel tells her that her father loved her so much was clear that she never had ill will towards the man. She just wanted him back, and her refusal to give up on Hector eventually leads to the whole Rivera family being reunited after Miguel's visit to the land of the dead is over, and the reunion of Hector and Coco was definitely a beautiful sight to behold. But let us know who you think the most good character in Coco is. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality spectrum of your favorite cartoons and movies. But most importantly of all, remember to stay wicked.